Jeff Thompson. With Dennis Lilly, he formed the fastest combination I've seen in top-class cricket in 25 years. He looks a little unorthodox with the crossing of the feet in delivery, but uh, just have a look at him in slow motion. That's one of the most marvellous bowling actions I've ever seen. And uh, as they say in the opening batting trade, he's very, very quick lad. The one that had the... Um to me, the unlimited pace, who was really the quickest, probably Tomo. But that's in no disgrace to Michael Holding, Andy Roberts, uh, Dennis Lilly, etc., and the others. He just seemed to have that little bit of brute power and strength that the others were more rhythm, etc. But Tomo just seemed to produce that ball out of nowhere that was uh, one bounce over the keeper's head and into the side screen. Second test match of the 74-5 series. And Jeff Thompson was bowling downwind, so he's bowling from the, from the outer end. And he bowled the short one, and as I described earlier, when Tomo bowls the bouncer, it usually goes fairly high. And with the bounce in Perth, it just absolutely took off. Didn't, you know, didn't wasn't one of those though. It was one of like, like a 747 taking off, boom, like that, you see. Rodney leapt in the air, but he had absolutely no price getting it. And we all turned around to see where it bounced, and it went kaboom, like that. Half followed the bloody fence and sideboard, the whacker. Now that was all right for us, you know, we, we loved that. But the mistake that the English batsman who was facing, he, he also turned and watched it go. And when, when he saw where it landed, you could just see the colour drain out of his face. I mean, and obviously his thought was, crikey, you know, that could have been straight at me. And um, I, I just, I always thought that that delivery probably made, had the biggest psychological effect on that 74-5 series. That was Tony Gregg, uh, I bowled a short ball at him. It didn't go over his head, but Gregg is tall, you know, so he stood up and it went through here, and it went over Marsh, he's still climbing, and, and half volleyed the Sydney Cricket Ground side screen. That'll give you an idea. I've done that in Perth. So if next time you're at the Sydney Cricket Ground, anyone that's watching this tape, just envisage a bowler bowling a short ball, going past the batsman's chin, going over the keep, and still going and hitting the side screen. Try and do that. That's uh, that give you an idea of the, the heat that was on the ball. You enjoyed that even though it was four buys? Oh yeah, yeah, because Greggy, yeah, Greggy uh, had plenty of guts, but he, he even uh, sort of went. <laughs> I can remember one, one occasion where we had uh, Lawrence Rowe, who I've always felt was one of the coolest individuals that you could find whilst batting at the crease. And he used to whistle little things like uh, the games that people play and things like that. And I'm at the other end and I'm looking at my hero and I could see Tom was rushing in and Tom was letting everything fly. So I walked up to the wicket and I said, um, which was uh, commonly known then, Yaga, why, why are you not whistling like the games that people play anymore? He said, no, you cannot do that when you're facing this guy, Jeff Thompson, because you can hardly see where the ball is coming from sometimes between his legs. And he said, whenever it rips, there's enough time, he says, for you to whistle anything. And caught brilliantly. Marsh. Rod Marsh taking a wonderful catch. Jeff Thompson, to me, was the, the biggest difference in that series. He was a, a physical threat. Uh, to the team, uh, to the batsman. Um, he bowled at fearsome pace and, and was really extremely hostile. Of course, he had Dennis Liddy at the other end, uh, an outstanding fast bowler, where Thompson was absolutely sheer pace, bunks, hostility. This guy was dangerous. I thought that, and he, and he was much stronger than, than we expected. I'd say probably he didn't realize his strength and, and his stamina. He, he, was, he would remove batters when you, you know, when you think they're settled. The Thompsons of the world, that turned out to be very, very quick in those days, um, showed that it's the distance that you move the ball through, in other words, how far you can move the ball. So his action enabled him to put all his muscles on stretch 
It enabled him to move the ball through a large displacement. And by doing that, he actually could achieve what a much taller bowler could do anyway. And he could be, that may have been off the bat. Thompson bowling to Luckhurst. Thompson to Amos. And that'll be four byes, high and wide to the fence. And bowl him. Edwidge, clean bowl by Thompson for six. Amos, not out 24, seven sundries. England, two for 40. The Ness is the new batsman. And Thompson, one for 13. Thompson bowling to the Ness. Vicious ball, that one. And a good one from Thompson to end the over. Chance, and he's out. 15. And he's bowled him, has he? Is, or is he still there? No, the wicket is still there. He had a look to see if the bales were still there. He's, he's played the ball, in fact, behind. Again, a soaring ball from Thompson to end the over, and Thompson... ...world. The underlying point is controversy. Controversy of the tail enders. Splendid bowling performance then from Jeff Thompson. He bowled really fast today, as indeed he has done throughout this match and a great psychological boost for him. Thompson to Lloyd and hit badly there that time. I remember the English literally running for cover and begging. The one individual that you found just very difficult to play would be Jeff Thompson. He was ruthless in my opinion. Tom was a danger. He was a danger man. Let's go with fire and direction. That was hit him in the face I think. Serious moral issue. I think it got him on the jaw. That climbed straight up. Hit him. <laughs> Didn't handle that too capably, Dilly. I don't believe that I've seen more ferocious or quicker bowling than I saw that day uh, with Jeff Thompson at the Wacker. And poor old Colin Cowdery, you know, 42 years of age, come out of just been added to the English party. Came out of a, he said he was sitting there having his Christmas lunch, preparing with the family, and all of a sudden gets a call. And uh, you know, a, a couple of days later, he's out in Perth playing against Jeff Thompson on a, a very quick whacker wicket. I don't believe I've seen anything quicker that day than Jeff Thompson.